Hello and welcome to our mathematics lesson. We continue to tackle the topic on indices and SADs. During our last lesson, we were able to complete this first part on the indices. We now want to cover the last part, which is the SADs. And under this uh, subtopic SADs, we are going to cover only two aspects and that will be the end of that particular less, uh, topic. So we're going to cover one fractional fractional indices and sands. Then lastly we look at how we can be able to operate using SADs, that is simple operations. With SADs, so these are the main aspects which we are going to cover in this particular lesson. Now, so far we have been able to look at the different types of indices. We have seen indices that have got positive powers. We have looked at indices that have got negative powers. And we have also looked at indices that have got zero powers. And we can be able to know that if you have 2 raised to positive 4, that is a positive power. If you have 2 raised to to negative 2. This is a negative power and they can be worked out. And then lastly, we know whenever we have a zero index, again this one can easily be worked out. So when you have 2 raised to the power of 4, we understand that this can be easily obtained as 16. 2 raised to negative 2 we understand this one was the same as 1 over 2 raised to 2, which will give you 1 over 4, or simply 0 0.25 in decimal notation. Then finally, on 0 indexes, we say that whenever you have any number raised to the power of 0, that number automatically goes to 1, irrespective of how large or how big that particular number was. And therefore, any number raised to zero will give us one. But there is trouble when we now introduce fractional indices. Like for instance, you are asked or you are given, let me use four, four raised to a half or four raised to half or you are given five raised to a third. You can be able to see that yes these two are powers but these powers are in fraction nature or their nature they are in a um, fraction form. What are you suppose or what is expected of you when you reach this particular point? If we have 4 raised to a half, for instance, and we have something of this nature, root of 4, multiplied by root of 4. Then I take this 4 raised to a half to be 4, so that I have uh, 4 raised to a half multiplied by another 4 raised to a half. What will I get or what will be my response for this part and what will be my response for this other part? In this particular case, we had said that or we use the laws of um, ind indices so that whenever we are multiplying uh, ind indices that have got the same bases, 
we can be able to add the powers together. And this will give us 4 raised to a half plus a half, which will give us 4 raised to 1, which is simply 4. What about this other case? We have got root of 4 multiplied by a root of 4. So in this other uh, case, we can be able to combine the two and we shall have 4 by 4, which will give us root of 16. And when you find the root of 16, you will simply come back to 4. So I want you to note whatever uh, the result we are having on the two cases, this first case and this second case. Here we had 4 raised to half multiplied by 4 raised to half. Here we are having root of 4 multiplied by root of 4. What can it tell you? So given that the result is the same, then we can be able to say that this one here and this one here on the right hand side are equivalent. And therefore, we can be able to detach this and recall it to that, detach this and recall it to this other section, and therefore we can be able to say that when you have 4 raised to a half, it can be written as the root of a 4. So that generally, if you have a raised to a half, you are going to have it as the root of that a. Initially, we had um, cube root of 5. Let's look at how that one will also behave like. We had um, 5 raised to a third. Now this 5 raised to a third, let's see or let's perform something on it that will require us to use the laws of indices and see what's going to happen. Let's take, we are multiplying 5 raised to a half, I mean 5 raised to a third multiplied by 5 raised to a third. By the virtue that these bases are the same, we are going to add the powers and this will give us 5 raised to a third plus a third. Let me have it cubed so that we are multiplying 5 raised to a third three times. So that means we shall add the powers again three times so that this will give me 5 raised to a third plus a third plus a third will give me one, which we can also easily be, uh, be comfortably say that it is um, five. What about the other case where we have cube root of five multiplied by the cube root of five multiplied by the cube root of five? So in this particular case, we can be able to operate this, or we can be able to find the cube root, um, this particular, evaluate this particular problem by combining all these under one cube root sign. And this will be five multiplied by five multiplied by five, which will give us the cube root of 125. And when you finally find out the cube root of 125, you'll discover that it's 5. So that um, when you get the cube root of this 5, you'll still end up to 125. So try to see again what we have on the left-hand side and what you have on the right-hand side. There's something that the result or the answers are telling you about these two parts. Try to detach it. 
So this will try to tell us that whenever we have such a case and this case, then they are going to be equal and therefore can be able to detach this to that, this to the other one, and finally this to that, and therefore conclude that actually five raised to a third is the same as the cube root of five. So this tells us that we can be able to write um, fractional indices using the root sign. And the denominator of that particular index or power will tell you what to put before the root sign. Like for instance, in the other case where we had this, um, we had four raised to two. We are able to say that this will be the square root of four. So two is outside the root sign. We have also been able to indicate that five raised to a third is the same as the cube root of five. You can be able to see the denominator of that fractional index comes before the root sign of that particular figure. And also, that means if we had another number, let's say um, five raised to a quarter, this again will be the fourth root of what? The fourth root of five, going by that. So if you had any number, let's say a raised to one over m, that is generally, then this will be written using the root form. Um, what we have under the denominator will come before the root sign, then the main factor will come inside the root sign. Now, there are cases where you can move on and be able to solve that particular solution that you'll have gotten. Like in the first case where we had 4 raised to a half, which was giving us um, the square root of 4. We understand that the square root of 4 is 2. And not just 2, we can also put it as 2 over 1. So this number ha can be expressed as a fraction where we have the numerator and the denominator. But there are certain cases where you obtain the result, yes, but if you proceed to solve it, then whatever you find out it can never be expressed as a fraction. That is, the number is neither recurring nor it is terminating. Like, for instance, if you have the cube root of 5, which we had also said is the same as 5 raised to a third, then using your calculator, cube root of 5 will be a very large number, 1.7099. 75947 and it's still continuing. That is not the end of the number. So you'll discover that this number is neither recurring nor it is terminating. Like the other one, it's terminated at 2. There are special names given to these two types of numbers. Numbers which terminate on finding their roots are normally called rational rational numbers while those ones that do not terminate and they neither recur are the opposite of that we refer to them as irrational irrational numbers now these irrational numbers are the ones that will now give us what we call the SATs. Mm. 
and therefore we can now be able to conclude on the two and say one that numbers that are written with fractional indices can also be written can also be written using the root sign and we are giving a good example where you have a raised to 1 over m which is a fraction so we are saying what uh, your factor comes inside the radical sign then you are the denominator comes before that particular radical sign and if we had two root of a is the same as having a raised to a half so you can always interchange or interwine then number two is about sads And we are saying that sads are irrational numbers. You recall you can be able to recall what we said about the um, irrational numbers. Whenever divided or whenever we find their root, those roots neither terminate nor they recur. They, um, they are therefore called irrational um, numbers. Which are written with their root sign. So like for instance when you talked about the 3 root 5, you talk of root of 2. These are good examples of irrational numbers which form um, sads. Now what about these irrational numbers? What are they? These irrational numbers are said to be numbers which can never be expressed. as a fraction i.e. a over b where both a and b are integers but b is not equal to zero that is it will never be equal to zero so whenever your number can never be expressed as a fraction, that, that number becomes an irrational number. And we are saying that if these irrational numbers are put under the radical sign or the root sign, then they become sads. Then their decimal, their decimal, expansion neither terminates terminates nor recur we had given an example of the cube root of five but you can also have a good example which is root two two is an irrational number because it can never be written or when you find the root of two you can never express it as a fraction so root of 2 using your calculator will give you 1.4142135622 and the number continues on and on and on another good example is pi when you take 22 over 7 which is pi you will get 3.142 eight five seven one four three but that is not the end of the number the number continues or uh, can still 
um, continue without terminating nor recurring. So if you look at these two instances or cases, you'll discover that the results we are having, this after the decimal point, the numbers 41421356 you can never be able to spot any pattern in them that means they are not recurring and again they are not terminating so during the 560 um, bc there are mathematicians who tried to express pi up to 100 decimal places and actually they came, uh, they were frustrated with these numbers, was um, questions were never, neither terminating nor they were recurring, and therefore they referred to those numbers as unthinkable numbers. And they had actually very strict rules that if you are, if you are found or if you are heard mentioning about these irrational or unthinkable numbers, you are put or you are sentenced to death. So I want to look at some of the examples how we can be able to or what questions we can be expected to answer in connection to fractional indices and SADs. Right? These numbers, write these numbers using a root sign. Number one, we have six raised to a half. Number B, we have two raised to 1 over 5 or to a fifth. Now we had said that we can be able to express uh, numbers or, or fractional indices using the root sign. I hope you can still be able to recall the general nature <coughs> where we talked of n raised to 1 over m and we say that for us to be able to express this one under or using the root sign then will have your root sign, the factor comes inside that radical sign, then m will be outside or before that particular radical sign. And it's actually above this um, little tail of the radical sign. So you can be able to see where the denominator goes to. So for this first case, where we have 6 raised to a half, then you come up with your radical sign or the root sign then the factor comes inside that particular root or the radical sign and then the denominator comes there and you can be able to note that this is the square root of 6 which can easily be written without the 2 as the square root of 6. For this 2 raised to the power of a fifth, the same will happen. We have our radical sign. 2 comes inside that particular radical sign. Then the denominator, which is 5, comes outside. So we shall have the fifth root of 2. Another example. Evaluate the following. Number one, we have 144 raised to a half. We have 27 raised to a third. Now from common knowledge, for, uh, you can never handle such unless you put them under the radical sign before you can be able to see what is expected of you. So once we put this under the radical sign, then this is the same as the square root of 144 
and from our understanding the square root of 144 is uh, 12. Then the second example we have 27 raised to a third. So we first rewrite this under the radical sign or using the root sign. This will give us 27 inside that radical. Then we have 3 outside it. So we are looking now for the cube root of 27, which from our understanding is 3. Now this is evaluation. Before you evaluate, you first put those particular numbers or you express the fractional indices under or using the root sign before you finally move on and evaluate. Let's look at how index laws are used whenever we are dealing with fractional indices and thirds. Use index laws. To simplify these expressions, number one, we are having a raised to a half multiplied by a raised to three over two. B we have x x raised to a half divided by x raised to a third then c we have y squared raised to a quarter so these are three cases or examples which we are expected to use the index loss to be able to solve them. You can be able to recall uh, that um, there are basically four index laws. The first touches on multiplication, that whenever you are multiplying numbers or pronumerals that have got the same, um, the same factors or the same basis, then you add the powers. Then whenever you are dividing numbers which have got, or, um, I mean, Indices, indices that have got the same powers, we subtract. And when you have a power raised to another power, then you multiply the powers together. Whenever we have the case of a zero index, we say the result will automatically go to one. So this is a case where we have multiplication of indices that have got the same basis or same factors A and A. So in that case, we add the powers, and this will be a raised to a half plus 3 over 2. When added, this will give us a, a, th a half plus 3 halves will give you 4 halves, which can also be further simplified because 4 is a factor of 2 and 2 goes into 4 2 times. Therefore, we're going to have a raised to, to 2. That is the square of a. Part b, we are having the division of x raised to a half and x raised to a third. Again, you can be able to note that the bases are the same and therefore for us to be able to evaluate them, we are going to subtract the powers. And this will give us x raised to a half divided by x raised to a third. The bases are the same, so this will be x raised to a half subtract a third. And when you subtract a third from a half, you get a sixth. So this will give us x raised to a sixth and you can leave your answer there or you can be able to rewrite this fractional index as or using the root sign so if you decide to use the root sign then this will be the sixth root of x part c we have y squared 
raised to a quarter. So this is a power of another power. Where we said for us to be able to evaluate this, we need to multiply the powers together. And this will give us y raised to 2 multiplied by a quarter. And when you multiply 2 by a quarter, 2 is a factor of 4. 2 there uh, goes into 2 once, goes into 4 twice. This will leave us with y raised to a half. And actually, again, this is a fractional index, which if you decide to rewrite it using the root sign, this will be the square root of y. Example 4, find the length find the length of the hypotenuse of the hypotenuse C in these triangles in these triangles we have uh, the first right angle triangle it's a right angle triangle where we are told this is two units this is five units and we are required to get C now from the previous understanding on triangles we learned of the Pythagoras theorem which says that the square of the sum of the two shorter sides of a triangle will give you or is equivalent to the square of the longest side that is a squared plus b squared is equals to c squared where a and b can be said to be the two shorter sides of that particular right angle triangle so when you take the sum of the square of the two shorter sides this squared plus b squared it should give us c squared so that we are going to apply that for us to be able to find the value of c our a is 2 so we square 2 plus our b is 5 we square 5 it will give us the square of c 2 squared is 4 and 5 squared is 25, which will give us our c squared. So this tells us that our c squared should be equal to 20, 29. And for us to be able now to find the actual value of c, we need to get the square root of both sides. When you do that, you'll get that c is equals to the square root of 29. Now in most cases we are supposed to leave our answers in sad form. This is the most correct way of leaving your answers which when you uh, decide to find their roots you will discover that they are neither terminating nor they are recurring. So the best way to leave them is to leave them in sad form. So as equals to root of 29. Part B of the same, we are having another triangle, which is a right angle triangle, with a height of 10 units and the base of 40 units and that side of the hypotenuse is C. So again for us to be able to get the longest side which is the hypotenuse we use the Pythagoras theorem which says that the square of the longest side is equivalent to the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides. We have been given the shorter sides as 10 and 40 respectively. So we can be able to substitute that in our equation or in the Pythagoras theorem. And this will be 10 squared 
plus 40 squared, which will give us c squared to be equivalent to 100 plus 1,600. So that means that c squared will be equivalent to 1,700. And now for you to get the value of c, you need to get the square root of both sides, and this will give you c to be the square root of 1,700. Again, you'll discover that using your, your calculator, square root of 1,700 is, is a decimal that is neither recurring nor terminating. And that's why it is best left as or in sad form. In a different level of discussing SADs, you'll be able to discuss how we can be able to simplify SADs. Because leaving it in this form, it's not simplified. For you to have said you have simplified your SAD, then whatever should be under the radical should be a prime number. So we can be able to say that our C is the root of 1,700. Last example on the SADs. Example 5. Show you are working. show you are working to prove to prove prove is to prove that the answers answer to question questions below simplify or simplifies to a raised to zero which will eventually be equal to one so there are two we have got a raised to a half multiplied by a raised to negative a half so let's begin by trying to solve this or work out this and see if at the end of the day we are going to get a raised to zero, which is one. Now these are fractional indices and we can be able to work it out. So as you can be able to see, the bases are the same and therefore going to use the multiplicative uh, law of indices which says that whenever multiplying indices that have got the same bases or factors, then we add the powers. So this will be equal to a raised to a half plus minus a half. And we understand whenever we have uh, these two operations following each other in a row, then whenever we have plus, minus, or minus, and plus, that will eventually give us a minus. So this will be equal to a raised to a half, subtract a half, and this will give us a raised to zero, because a half from a half will give you zero, which indeed is equal to one. And therefore, we will have shown that. Part B, we have a raised to a half, the all of it raised to a half, then divided by a raised to a quarter. So we need to work out the first part before we combine it with the last part. This will give us, we are going to use the law of a power of a power, where we say that whenever you raise another power using another power, then we multiply the powers together. And this will give us a raised to a half times a half. Then we divide by a raised to a quarter. This 
rs to a half times a half a half by a half will give us a quarter and therefore going to have a, um, 1 over 4 divided by a raised to 1 over 4 so that we now use the division law that says that whenever we divide indices that are with the same basis we subtract and this will give us a raised to a quarter minus a quarter which will give us a raised to zero again which will terminate or end up with a as one so let us look at the other subtopic on how we can be able to perform simple operations that involve SADS. At this juncture, let it be known that SADS are just like any other numbers. And we understand that any other numbers can be operated. They can be added, they can be subtracted, they can be multiplied, they can also be divided. So those four operations, since SADS are numbers, we can be able to apply them still on, on SADS. So that when you have a sad, let's, uh, let's say, root 2, it's a number. If you have a sad, let's say, root of 7, it's a, it's a number. And all these sads can be operated on by using the four major operations that we have. That is, one, we have got the addition of sads. The procedure we use to add SADS is the same that we use to subtract SADS. Then we have got the third operation, which is multiplication, and says that uh, SADS can also be multiplied. And then the fourth operation is on division. So SADS can also be divided just like other numbers can be divided. Although that there are cases where troubles will arise, but we'll see how they can easily be sorted out. So we are saying that SADS can be simplified, can be simplified using addition using addition or subtraction but there's a condition here only when we have got like terms that is if they are like sads that means you can never add or subtract sads which are different in nature. Like if you have root of 2 and root of 7, adding them or subtracting them is actually impossible because they are not like. E.g., if you have 2 root of 3, we want to add it to 3 root of 3. Now this is just like any or adding up any numbers. Let's suggest that you now decide to let your sad to be a pronumeral. Let's give it pronumeral, uh, pronumeral a. Then this will give you 2a plus 3a because we have root of 3 and root of 3. That tells you that these two sads are like sads in the first case. And this will finally give you 5a. So don't leave your answer there. Go back and say, what was our A? Our A was the root of 3. Therefore, this is 5 root of 3. So for the SADs to be added up, the same thing just happened. These are like SADs, and therefore you can be able to add them, just like we normally add other numbers or algebra. So 2 root 3 plus 3 root 3, we add these two whole numbers, which will give us 5 root of 
3. And if you had a case of subtraction, let's say 11 root of 7, subtract 2 root of 7. The same thing is going to happen. You can let, because we are having similar SADs or like SADs, you can let that SAD to be a pronumeral B. So that means she shall be having 11B subtract 2B, which will essentially give you 11B subtract 2B. This will give you 9B. And you now go ahead and substitute. The value of B is root of 7, and therefore this will be 9 root, um, root 7. So this will give us, so we subtract this main, that is 11 minus 2, you get 9, then root of 7. Another thing that we like to pick it up from here is that if you have a sad which is squared, this is more or less than saying we are going to have root of a multiplied by the root of a. And this, as we had said, you can be able to write them as fractional indices, which will be a raised to a half multiplied by a raised to a half, which when we use the index law, multiplicative index law, this will be a raised to a half plus a half, which will be equal to a raised to one, which is simply a. So whenever we have root a sad squared, then it will automatically give us the number that is under the, the radical sign. So that, for example, if we have the root of 5 and it is squared, then this will eventually be equal to, to 5. In another case, if we have the root of a multiplied by the root of b, now this is multiplication of the sads, where one sad is multiplied by the other sad, then we can first be able to combine these two sads under one radical, where we're going to have a times b, and this will give us a b. So that is on multiplication. Example or a good example is when you have the root of 5 multiplied by the root of 3. This shall be combined into 1, that is 5 multiplied by 3, and this will give us root of 15. What about the case when we are dividing these indices, uh, sads? So when you have the root of a dividing the root of b, we must first combine this under one radical, and this will be the root of a all over the root of b. And therefore, you can be able to do that. E.g., if you had root of 10 divided by root of 5, for instance, this will be equal to, you put everything under one radical, 10 over 5, and you can be able to see that 10 over 5 is 2, and this will give us the square root of, of 2. Let's look at a number of examples on how the four operations can be applied on SADS. Simplify each of the following. One, we have two root of five plus six root of five. B, root of 3 
minus 5 root of 3. And finally, C, 3 root of 7 minus root of 6 plus 2 root of 7. So these are the three cases on addition and subtraction of SADs. One main thing that we have said for you to either add or subtract SADs is that we must have like SADs. Does the first one qualify to be like SADs? We have root of 5, root of 5. Good, they are like SADs. So we can proceed and operate on them. And what is the sign? We are adding. So when you add 2 plus 6 of that SAD, we are going to get 8 root of that particular third, which is 5. The second case, we are having root of 3, subtract 5 root of 3. Are this one satisfying that first condition that they must be like? Yes, they are satisfying because we have root of 3, root of 3. And that tells us that we can now go ahead and subtract them or operate on them. And 1 subtract 5 is negative. 4, so we shall have negative 4, root of that third, which is 3. Finally, we have 3 root of 7 minus root of 6 plus 2 root of 7. Does this number 3 satisfy our basic minimum condition that all of them should be like sads? We have root 7, root 6, root 7. So, not all of them are like SADs. We only have two of them. That is this part and this part, which have got like SADs. And therefore, we can be able to combine the two. 3 root of 7 plus 2 root of 7 will give us 5 root of 7. We subtract root of 6. At this stage, there is no further. You can never go any further. You are now locked down. And therefore, this is the simplest form in which you can be able to leave this particular sense. Last example that will involve division and multiplication. Example 2. Simplify each of the following. Number 1, root of 3 multiplied by root of 10, then part B, root of 24 divided by root of 8. So these are two basic operations on SADs. One is on multiplication, the other one is on division. Now we had said for us to be able to multiply SADs, we put them under one radical sign and we multiply those particular factors 3 by 10 and this will give us the root of 3 multiplied by 10 is, is 30. Then for this, the same is going to happen. We need to put them under one radical sign which will be 24 divided by 8 and this will give us the square root of 4 and we all understand that the square root of 4 is 2. Now note in this case we are saying that as for now we can be able to leave our sads and simplified as this but in future we shall now be able to learn on how we can be able to simplify sads. Understand that I said whenever you have a simplified sad then that particular sad under the radical sign, we shall have a prime factor or a prime number. 24 divided by 8 will give us 3. And that means we are going to have under the radical sign the root of 3. So this brings us to the end of the discussion on how we can be able to um, perform simple or basic operations which involves the uses of SADs. 
And again, that brings us to the end of the topic on the indices and SADs that you have been covering. The most important thing for you to be able to remember is one, the loss of indices, which we said there are three in number, although we have got the fourth one. That is one on multiplication that if you have a raised to m multiplied by a raised to n, the result we add the powers together, that will be m plus n. Then we have got the division law for SADs, which says that whenever you have indices with same bases being divided, then we subtract we subtract the powers. This will give us a raised to m minus n. Then the third important law is the power over power, which says that if you have a raised to m raised to another power n, then we multiply the powers, and this will give us a raised to mn. Then lastly is the zero index, which says that whenever you have any number raised to zero, that number becomes one. Then number two is on SADs, where we have said that SADs are numbers which are expressed in radical form, and those particular numbers are irrational, meaning they can never be expressed as a fraction A over B. And these SADs can either be added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided, just like any other numbers. That brings us to the end of our topic. Thank you.